Ja, nee, dat is niet. Ik heb geen zo'n vorm van aan, maar ik heb zo'n nee. Ik ben lekker Ja, dat is Nee, dan ga je niet zoeken meer. Dat is wat wel. Ja, dat is wel. Ja, dat is wel. Ja, nee, dat moet gewoon een proper iPad 1 gaan kopen of iPad 2. Ik heb gewoon een nieuw gegeven in het van twee handspel van Marktplaats. Ik moet niet jouw ding doen. Hij valt voor hoe het heeft. Ik zet There we go. <laughs> yeah. And if you can you turn off the light? So we will, we will have a Sorry, sorry for the delay, guys. The, uh, so this panel, uh, we want to talk about storytelling and the many ways that, well, some of the many ways that uh, we tell the story of who makes Wikipedia, who makes the various Wikimedia projects, how we contextualize the stories of the people um, behind the, the product that everyone knows so well. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna each present a very short introduction about ourselves and about some of the work that we do uh, in this regard. And the, the basic concept is is looking at contextualizing uh, Wikipedia for a general public letting like kind of we use the metaphor looking under the hood as like in a car you don't ever really see what's under the hood. Uh, and that's that's kind of instructed some of our thinking around story time. So I'm going to turn it to Victor first, and uh, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Hi, everybody. How y'all doing? <laughs> All right. Uh, OK, so uh, my name is Victor. Uh, I've been a Wikipedia editor since 2005, mostly on English Wikipedia. And then some guy convinced me, go to Commons, because you upload pictures, and there's, that's where pictures go. So I uh, started at the foundation in 2011. And, uh, I think we should just kind of open with this, and then we'll explain everything there. This is the latest uh, uh, kind of more polished work. It's not released yet, so you guys are getting kind of a sneak preview. Hi, this is the letter which me and my classmates, my classmates wrote to access Wikipedia for free. It goes as follows. Open letter to Salsi, MTN. We are learners in grade 12 at Sinenjong High School, Joslova Park, Nunatip, Cape Town. We recently heard that in some other African countries like Kenya and Uganda, cell phone providers are offering their customers free access to Wikipedia. We think this is a wonderful idea and would really like to encourage you also to make the same offer here in South Africa. Our school does not have the library. 90% of us have cell phones, but it is expensive for us to buy a time. So if we could get free access to Wikipedia, it would make a huge difference to us. Normally, when we do research, Wikipedia is one of the best sites, and there is information on just about every topic. Think of the boost that it will give us as students and to the whole education system of South Africa. Our education system needs help, and having access to Wikipedia would make a very positive difference. Thank you. 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 And Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that is 
not online yet. We're still putting a couple final touches on it. Uh, but that's going to be released uh, onto Commons and then onto the WMF YouTube account. The goal of this is that this thing goes viral and then uh, it communicates a lot. Uh, this communicates what uh, kinds of initiatives are going on without talking about the system, without talking about Wikimedia Foundation, without talking about any of this kind of uh, uphill knowledge battle that it takes to actually understand how Wikipedia works. Just think about it from a normal internet user. I don't know anything about Wikipedia except that there's this encyclopedia online, right? There's this source of knowledge. And then they see this open letter of these kids in school who want to better themselves, who don't have it too good, and maybe they want to help in some way. So uh, let me give you a little more background here. So I work in uh, fundraising, technically. Uh, my role is to put a face onto Wikipedia. When you message in fundraising, it's not just a matter of articulating to people a couple words or a couple sentences. You have to convince them sometimes on an emotional level. So I try to provide content uh, for that. Uh, this was the result of uh, a good deal of research and uh, uh, production. So. Uh, Let's see here. So when we started, uh, there was really kind of no roadmap for this. Uh, the foundation had, we had done all kinds of, and other people in the audience here can explain this a little bit further, but uh, we had done all kinds of uh, banner messages to raise funds for Wikipedia, uh, to raise funds for the movement in general. And uh, we needed to better that. And so uh, when I started, it was a matter of talking to a ton of people, finding good stories, and then testing images and testing messages and seeing what strikes a chord with people, what actually makes people want to get involved in one way or another. Uh, and as time went on, uh, messages got tweaked here and there. We have a, there's a staffer here, uh, his name is Brandon Harris, and we had some real dumb luck Right, up, right at the beginning. We, we took a photo of him, it's kind of looks like this. And he looks very heavy metal with long hair and a big mustache. He looks kind of badass, right? And the internet loved him and suddenly like donations went up and clicks went up and everybody started like, wow, this is a huge, significant development. Uh, and so as time went on, uh, we just kept kind of testing that. Uh, when we do a test, we take a, uh, and other people in the audience can explain this further, uh, but uh, it's A-B testing. So you do a test where you have one thing you want to test, and you have maybe slight variations on that. Maybe a different picture, maybe a little bit of a different text, and you see uh, how well those do, in uh, how much money comes in, how many clicks does that get, and so forth. Uh, so in 2011, we went to uh, Wikimania uh, in Haifa, uh, did a bunch of interviews, but we really didn't have that much time to do much research. And we kind of didn't know exactly what to do with uh, these interviews right away, aside from just kind of banner tests and photos and things like that. Uh, tried making a video, but didn't have too, much, too many resources to be able to do it. Uh, then last year in 2012, uh, we had a much bigger production uh, and interviewed quite a few more people. Uh, I think about something like 100 people uh, for about 30 minutes each uh, in four hotel rooms with uh, white backgrounds and uh, that ended up becoming 25 videos uh, with one montage video to try to explain the movement. And one thing I'd like to say is that the, uh, there is a huge uphill communication battle to the general internet user. Uh, when you try to explain Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, people get that. When you try to explain to people Wikipedia is written by anyone, they have a bunch of questions in their head after that. When you try to say it's nonprofit, it's free culture, it, then you start getting into ceasing by and say licensing, everybody's like, oh, you know, they don't know what's going on. So uh, trying to tailor messaging to people so that they can understand it is very difficult. And this is why Matt said earlier, uh, it's sort of like looking under the hood of the car. 
it's sort of the engineer types like to see the engine and like to understand how the engine functions, but that's not everybody. Most people just want the car to drive. Most people don't even want to think about the car, they just want to get to the destination. And so when we message people for fundraising, we're kind of interrupting that and we're making them have to do a little bit of work and have to think a little bit that uh, Wikipedia is actually sponsored entirely by donations. And the people who get that, there's this kind of level of understanding that they have to have. They have to share the values of what it means to have something nonprofit, and then they have to actually dig into their own pocket and contribute themselves. Uh, so uh, this last video that you just saw was, uh, that was the result of a fair bit of research. Uh, I've been keeping my eye out for the best story I could find for this year to tell. And these kids, uh, they're in a poor high school in a slum in South Africa. Uh, they wrote, they heard about Wikipedia Zero in other countries in Africa. Uh, the, uh, and they decided to write a letter that they posted on Facebook asking the telecom companies, can you please give us free access to Wikipedia? I thought this was so amazing. I said, let's get a film crew there, let's meet and another filmmaker. We went to South Africa and said, let's just have them record their, read their letter on camera. It'll tell so much. You know, if this is true, if this is honest, then that's all you really need. And so we had them just stand in front of where they're from and everything you see behind them there, that's where they're from. Uh, this is how valuable this is to them. Uh, so this actually is just a trailer for a longer form documentary. It'll be maybe 20, 20 minutes or so. Uh, and the goal for this is once we have our title tested for this video and we're pretty sure about that all the elements that make a video go viral are there. There's no real exact recipe to do it, uh, but titling is one of the big parts of it. Uh, then we'll release that, and then after that we'll release the documentary, and the two will uh, sort of amplify each other. Uh, I think I'm about good for there. I can uh, turn it over to one of you guys then. So, yeah, so thank you, Victor. Um, so, do you want to present one here? So we're uh, we're gonna give we're just gonna kind of jump between presenters and give you a, a few different examples of the different ways that we tell stories, um, and then we'll open it up uh, hopefully pretty quickly to any kind of questions and suggestions, etc. Do you have a question? I have something short. Is the documentary about Wikimedia, Wikimedia Zero or? or it's a documentary about, about the school. school. It's, a, it's about the school, about who they are, where about they're from. The initiative they sent to Orange or. Uh, it's not about Wikipedia <coughs> Zero specifically. It's about this school and how they have the need for it. Because one of the things, one of the big questions that people have uh, about Wikipedia Zero is, why do you even try? Why are you, why are you doing that? You know, why not just wait for better electronics to come out? Why not just? Uh, uh, how is this a problem? Everybody has Wikipedia, right? And that's not true at all. And that's something that I that you need to show people. I think there's a there's a message, a communications motto I would buy. Uh, which is to show, not tell. Uh, and when you show it, people can see it. So let's let's uh, let's save uh, further questions for for after uh, we finish done with a quick presentation. But we'd love to get more questions and, and suggestions and comments. Um, so Tillman Tillman's going to introduce himself and explain a little bit. Okay, so my name <coughs> my name is Tillman Bayer. Um, I've been working for the Wikimedia Foundation since uh, over two years now. And uh, my job title is uh, Operations Analyst, and actually in the communications uh, team together with Matthew and Jay Walsh. So, um, I start from how I got involved in the whole movement. I've been a Wikipedian since 2003, actually, almost 10 years. And the. Um, uh, and what got me kind of involved into this whole um, informing community thing. I see your old spam page here. Looks like I got your URL right. So, <laughs> and what kind of got me involved first was um, the movement journalists that like the queer initiative and the signpost, because I was kind of seeing that actually a lot of us don't understand what ourselves don't understand the movement. I mean, um, people need to be informed about technical news, about um, what other people and other projects are doing, that kind of stuff. So, it's a kind of a work where they got involved in the signpost. That was the editor in chief, um, the predecessor, humble predecessor of this guy over there, uh, the, of the sign boss in 2010-2011 for the Trinity Foundation. And so, and what I 
part of the site was, if you know, it is um, in the media section, which is kind of it's a bit, you don't know, but it, we used to try to track a lot of the media coverage, and um, which brings us to the challenges we're talking here about um, what the media understands and doesn't understand about uh, Wikipedia, what it chose to highlight and not highlight. And I think um, Eddie is going to talk more about the sign for itself, so I leave that to him. And um, at the foundation, I'm, um, I mean, I've done very good things like the monthly foundation reports, which is more uh, geared not to the general public, but to our um, own movement, to journalists as well, right, but also to editors, so our movement. And it's kind of more accountability thing. So we record uh, what the foundation staff is doing in kind of um, not very accessible terms often, so we put some work into explaining what it is, but. Um, we don't expect journalists to understand it immediately, although sometimes it's taken up. Then um, um, we also have things like the annual reports, for example, which are more like, um, as you showed it, geared towards the general public. And actually, we very much uh, understand this as a storytelling thing, so we spend a lot of time um, trying to explain what we're actually doing with some software project. And just to wrap up my work, so I'm also involved a lot in the book that Matthew is going to cover a bit. And I um, want to talk about one, I think, um, instructive communication challenge, um, <clears throat> which I think many of you are familiar with. And <coughs> actually, the other tab here. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the quality of Wikipedia. And you all know this, right? That um, people still don't understand that you can have a resource which is freely available for anyone, anybody can, but any kind of property that can still be reliable. And I think, like, uh, five, six, seven, eight, eight years ago, for example, when the Nature study came out uh, in 2005, um, we kind of thought the question settled, and it kind of is, right? I mean, Suez is a nice quote from the journalist that, what, what was it? Uh, <coughs> Doubting Big Pierce, so 2007. Um, but you still have these uh, stories like this. I mean, this is actually some interesting research by Tahir Seri, who is a researcher who's actually also here at Wikimania. And he uh, had the statistics about the most frequent edit word on pages on Wikipedia. And we really love it, right? I mean, this came up in out in May, I think, or in June. And there's still media, cover, 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 media stories coming up. And you see, even today, you have several new tweets about this. Um, and what it paints, it paints a picture of Wikipedia as this really controversial um, battlefield, and um, you can't trust it, that's the undertone. And, yeah, for example, last year we, we were featuring another study, um, <coughs> which also did some sets of Wikipedia, but I looked at how often actually um, uh, politically opposing Wikipedians collaborate on Wikipedia, and I compared it to some other statistics saying that in the blogosphere or on Twitter, so people don't talk to each other unless they're of the same political persuasion. So, um, and we as Wikipedians kind of know this, right? The, the strength of Wikipedia is you have to get to know this. You have to work on one article with your political opponents, and um, but the general public isn't quite aware of this. So we wrote this blog post on the eve of the um, presidential election in the US, and got quite some section just featuring this. And the graphic here, so you know you have to get visual. Um, it's actually uh, each dot is an editor, and the blue ones are the Democrats, these are US editors, the red ones are uh, Republicans, and they're connected once they interact with each other on a talk page. And it kind of shows you that they interact. So it's not separately in two points, in two camps, but actually in in interacting with each other too. So it's just one example right, where we have a dominating media narrative and we try to a little bit push something else that's uh, also showing what's going on under the, under the hood, how we're communicating on Wikipedia, um, which doesn't quite fit the stereotype right, of Wikipedia as this battlefield, uh, this vandalized uh, website. Then, and also we, uh, together with Dario Tarabali, with the research and the foundation, we we uh, edit this monthly newsletter, the Wikimedia Research Newsletter, where we <coughs> basically feature all kinds of studies. We also feature this uh, edit war studies. 
and um, and so sometimes these are actually uh, papers or studies which are also useful for the um, to paint a more accurate um, picture of. The other thing is, of course, quality. And then if you see in our last July um, um, edition, we featured this PhD student who did a, another comparison of Wikipedia and Britannica, and actually found out that 90% of Wikipedia articles were rated more highly in terms of accuracy by uh, university academics who were reviewing it blindly. That's pretty solid news. And I know unfortunately it didn't get a lot of traction. It did. We did we pushed it on Twitter, for example, and get a lot of retweets there. But um, just saying there's a lot of opportunity to still to um, counterbalance this media narrative. Um, anything else? So one thing. I need a second one. No, so I think it's called Wikimedia, right? <laughs> Um, so, um, my sister is going to be talking a bit more about the blog, and I just want to mention quickly the results of a survey we ran some months ago. Um, so we asked, we kind of wanted to know more about who reads our blog, and for example, we found out that 60% um, of those who replied are actually editors, so it's kind of internal, kind of external. On the other hand, we know that a lot of uh, blog posts do get up, picked up by the press. I mean, if you write something that actually interests people, a lot of tech things, for example. And um, we also know that yeah, so a lot of them are donors. Is it readable? Um, not really, I guess. Yeah, so what do you say? Um, but a lot of them aren't. So the blog is kind of uh, intermediate. It's, we, we released the moves, news here for the movement, but also for um, journalists and others who are just interested but don't edit. And these are the, uh, 40%. So we have some old timers, some new timers. Um, so what is. Um, And we kind of also asked about the areas that we are uh, blogging about. So this is, um, I don't know if it's um, readable, but <coughs> for example, um, te technical information is very important for our readers. That's, that's more the um, movement view, but it's also people, for example, uh, we get a lot of interest for um, news about the mobile side, for example. And that actually makes it into the press, like the mobile editing recently. Um, we have um, yeah, well, research reports, which are interesting. And outreach work, we feature more and more guest contributions by chapters, for example. I mean, Matthew's going to talk about that. And I think that's almost about it. So the, this little study, I mean, it was a small study, but it's on comments now, if you're interested. Will you, will you write a blog post? We're not sure. I made a blog post. It was, um, and it's actually informing the redesign that uh, Matthew is going to talk about right now. So, thank you, Tillman. Uh, so, my name is Matthew uh, Matthew Roth, and I, I actually started with Victor and Megan and the fundraising team as a storyteller uh, in 2011, and w went to Haifa and, and did some of the the interviews and uh, experimentation with stories to see how how well we could uh, get them to to. Uh, turn it up, and the at the end of 2011 and in through 2012, we had uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, of interviews that we didn't use in fundraising because we found that that through testing that they weren't uh, effective at at bringing in donations, and we wanted to figure out other ways to feature them. And the fundraising team did a big uh, thank you all campaign. Um, I, in that interim period, moved over to the communications department within the Wikimedia Foundation and um, started using a lot of the, uh, the stories from the, that we collected from um, the Storyteller Project and started profiling them on the blog. And the thought, the thought there was we wanted to uh, recognize the people who participated in the projects, but we also wanted to use these interesting stories to, again, look underneath the hood, look behind the curtain and see uh, who the people were who were writing 
uh, and contributing to the projects. So um, we also, as, as I started to, to have more responsibility in editing the Wikimedia blog, um, we were, uh, which is this, um, we wanted to do, we wanted to get a little bit beyond uh, just Wikipedia, and so we started featuring a lot of photographers uh, from the um, picture of the day. We would basically take the, the upcoming pictures of the day, and we'd reach out to the photographers um, from Commons, and we'd ask them if they'd participate in an interview, and then we would do these interviews with them. Uh, again, showcasing, in, in this case, we're trying to tell the story to the general public that uh, you could, you can take pictures and you can copyright them, or you can take pictures and you can donate them uh, to in perpetuity uh, to people all around the world uh, by by putting them on comments. And so we wanted to, to showcase the stories of the people behind behind those. Um, in the in the as we started to think about the way that the the blog worked, uh, we we realized that we could continue to have kind of a corporate. Uh, Wikimedia Foundation blog, and use corporate loosely, uh, but but a, a blog that represents the the foundation, um, or we could we could work to to tell uh, more stories uh, from the movement, and uh, we started internally we started talking about uh, the blog being the Wikimedia blog because I mean you see the URL it's not blog.wikimediafoundation.org it's it's Wikimedia, um, so we started well we still need a an outlet for a lot of the, you know, the communications that come from the foundation. We wanted to uh, showcase more of the work that was happening um, from throughout the movement, volunteers, chapters, etc. And so we started encouraging um, more pe more people to contribute. I mean, at first, it started with just reading Wikimedia L, and if somebody had an interesting story, saying, "Hey, could, would you want to do a blog post for the for the Wikimedia blog?" But also, we got to trying to to take the word foundation out of it more. Uh, even though it's still in the masthead on the current design. I'll show you the new design in a second. Um, but the, the, uh, what we wanted to do, and let me see if I can quickly find, unfortunately search is pretty bad on WordPress too. Um, the, uh, we, wanted, we also wanted to encourage more um, multilingual content. I believe I believe it was March twenty second, twenty twelve. It was the very first time we had a translated blog post on the Wikimedia Foundation blog, uh, which is which is kind of crazy uh, that it would that it would take that long. Uh, let's see. No, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not finding it immediately. But um, the it didn't have the the tag I was looking for. But um. It, it, it's so annoying that you can't search by tags. How are mine in Brussels? Does it? Yeah. Thank, thank you. So basically, um, what we wanted to do was uh, encourage a lot more multilingual posts because we, we clearly we're, we're biased by being based in San Francisco. A lot of the staff is, is English speaking primarily. Um, so it, it, we had to kind of figure out the riddle, how do we, how do we encourage more multilingual posts if we don't necessarily um, speak the language? And uh, what we found was actually at, at Mike Peel, who's a part of Wikimedia UK, at his suggestion we started drafting um, blog posts on uh, Meta. So he, he essentially encouraged us, if there is no reason for it to be secret, why not put the, the calendar and the drafts out in public? And um, that was very strange to us at first. Um, I don't know how many of you have, have worked in journalism or in publishing. It's, it's kind of odd to think of putting a crappy first draft up on, uh, in public. Uh, but it, it, we started by, by publishing the calendar um, in public. So you can see this shows for July, this shows all the, the posts that we uh, we're planning, and we do this in advance. We we encourage people to um, to draft in public now too, and you can see a lot of people are, are are actually doing that. We get translations because it's on Meta. We have the translate tool, but we also have some wonderful friends. I'm going to point out Justin is here. He uh, 
he's been doing a lot of Spanish translations. Um, so just kind of going through posts that he thinks would be interesting and, and adding a, a Spanish translation to it, and then we can add that, we can put that onto the blog. So part of the, part of the thinking was that if we're gonna really do this, we need to, we need to um, expand beyond just Wikimedia Foundation news, and we need to encourage more and more. And we've had, we've had varying success with, with, some chapters have, have embraced it really thoroughly, Wikimedia, Sverige, uh, Mexico, um, who else? Czech Republic and some others have, have uh, <coughs> really taken to drafting on Meta. Sometimes they won't even uh, notify me they want to do it. They're just like, hey, new post, check it out. And, and it's great because it's, it's stuff that you, there's no way you could, uh, there's no way you could create an editorial calendar from, it, from San Francisco or anywhere else where you're saying, I want this, 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 and this. It's like, it needs to, it needs to come from, needs to come bubbling up from where the interesting stories are. Um, so we've been really encouraged by uh, how much content is coming in, and, and that's something I want to, at the end of this, is encourage more people to to do that and to tell uh, to to tell your story, to figure out a way to contribute your story to to this um, platform. The let's see, we in in doing kind of in, in thinking about photographer profiles and their and profiling their images uh, more. Pro, profiles of people, multilingual content, we started to recognize that the blog had some pretty big limitations. Um, and we, um, you know, there, there's not, it's, it's not a really elegant way to display images. There's no, uh, there's no gallery plugin because uh, we have, a pretty wild privacy policy that, that makes a lot of plugins hard to do. We, we have a, um, a limited limited uh, capacity within our operations team for such a small small platform. They're working with uh, Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons and Wiktionary and some of these enormous projects. So getting the, the time and energy that we might want for uh, improvements to the blog is, has been, uh, it's just, it can't be as high on their priority list uh, as some of the other projects. So. We, but we set about uh, thinking about how to redesign the project. We wanted to focus more on multilingual content. We wanted to focus more on images. We wanted to, to make it a, a nicer presentation. Um, and I'm actually going to wait to show you, because uh, we're going to do sort of a looking forward into the future. But I will show you the redesign in just a second. Um, so that it, it, we, we, and within the, the blog context, we think of that as, as a main platform for storytelling. But then we try and amplify that with the various social media channels. And we, uh, we currently help administer the at Wikipedia and at Wikimedia channels, the Wikipedia Facebook page, um, and uh, 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 Wikimedia and Wikipedia on Google+, Plus, a LinkedIn page, etc. We, in the same spirit of trying to get more participation in those channels, we've actually been uh, experimenting with a couple of, of projects recently. And we will retweet. We Fortunately, with Google Translate and stuff, you can see if there are other, if chapters or groups have uh, Facebook pages and they put their updates there. We can we can share those and retweet, etc. Um, but we've actually started trying to get involved in, in doing it more strategically. With one of the projects recently, there's a um, today's article for Improvement Wiki Project on English Wikipedia, and so we've been coordinating with them when they have a new article of the day that, that they'd like people to edit. We'll uh, we'll we'll work with them. They actually have been drafting a lot of the proposed social media messages. Um, we we'd really like to expand that, and we're doing that also on Meta. Uh, so if anyone is interested, and I'll I'll cede uh, my time to Ed real quickly here. But if, if please see us afterwards. We would really like to experiment with more multilingual content, uh, more content from the community on the the big channels. Uh, we've we've had some success with helping admin the um, like the wiki source. Facebook page, we can share to Wikipedia uh, Facebook page and then we'll get 20,000 or 30,000 people seeing a message that would have only been seen by 100 people before that. So uh, we're interested in doing a lot more collaboration that way. So, Ed. All right, hi. I'm the Ed at the signpost, the Ed 17 on uh, Wikipedia or Ed Earhart in real life. So, I became, or I was a, started contributing to Wikipedia in 2006, got blocked really quickly for disruptive trolling, no useful edits, I believe. Uh, it's changed a bit since then. 
started actively editing again in March 2008. Uh, eventually can be edited the signpost, which differs from these three in that it is not written for an external, or, um, external audience, really, at all, for the most part. You know, Tillman had his, uh, in his talk, he said, or it was divided between I read media sites, I donated, I edit, or other. We aim for the third person, pretty much, as you can see. By this, not many outside people are really going to care what the English Wikipedia's arbitration committee is going to decide or the newest featured content. But we try to do our best for the audience we're aiming for. It's also probably not nearly as pretty, even by Wikimedia blog standards. But it, it, we're limited by the Wikipedia model in and of itself, by, you know, that we're based on. If we went to an external site, we would lose a lot of our readers who, by and large, come from the English Wikipedia. So, in essence, what we try to do is that we boil down relatively complex movement topics, such as uh, finance. You know, not many people are going to dig into the Wikimedia Foundation's annual report, sorry, Tillman, uh, without it being shortened or abbreviated, boiled down to essential topics. And that's basically what we try to do. Again, you know, we aim for the internal audience more. And that allows us to do something like this because, again, an outside audience isn't really going to care about arcane details of the Wikimedia Foundation spending over the course of 2012-2013. We also used to do a tech report, but we've also found that the people who have the knowledge to read a technological report are very limited, and they typically are limited to Wikimedia Foundation employees or editors who already very busy with coding and don't really want to contribute a weekly report to the signpost. So, how do what 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 do we do that complements what these three do? Well, every once in a while we do have a story that blows up. We had an article on popular pages and analysis and basically of the top ten Wikipedia articles of twenty twelve and yeah, top among them Whitney Houston things like that, and that blew up, went viral everywhere on Twitter, Facebook, had a ton of clicks, and it was really cool. It wasn't something that we did uh, in-house, it was a guy came forward and decided that he wanted to write this piece for the signpost, we said okay, let him go at it, and it was actually very interesting. Wait, that was probably our first real piece, to him. probably answer that, that blew up and got a lot of views. Uh, could you explain what was so special that it went viral? What's so special about it? No, it's like, it's, it was a piece that could have been it's basically exclusively tailored for both Wikipedians and non people who could care less about the you know internal <coughs> politics of Wikipedia. It was just straight up about popular pages, and you know who doesn't, who wouldn't be interested in a list of the top ten articles on Wikipedia? Oh, probably a lot of people, but a lot more people than. <laughs> Are you talking about the top ten most popular articles? No, it's not top. It was the most the the top ten articles on Wikipedia by page clicks. The most viewed was the count. I can probably show you. Um, so, it, but for the most part, a lot of uh, basically all of our high page hit articles come from retweets on the Wikipedia Facebook account or Wikimedia Facebook account things like that. This was the one that blew up and went crazy insane everywhere. The list is down in the bottom right. Whitney Houston was the top, Amy Winehouse, Steve Jobs obviously. And people were interested to see what you know the world is clicking in on. But as I said, by and large the signpost is for an internal audience. Um, which, but we can also we also serve the role of it, going farther under the hood than the work these three do. Uh, so that if someone is looking for more, say, arcane details of Wikimedia's finances, that's the purpose we serve the movement. Thank you. So I just want to ask, um, we were, and I'm sorry for the technical uh, issues earlier, we were gonna hopefully wrap a little bit sooner for uh, audience questions and discussion. But real quickly, I wanted to ask each of the presenters um, kind of what, what you think the future will look like for 
the work that you're doing and the stories that you're telling and, and what you would hope for if, if you if you could have anything. So why don't you just go? What I would hope for. Well, I mean, all of us hope for more page clicks, more views, more penetration. Uh, so I guess anything that increased the Wikipedia edit account. Uh, but I would hope that we could find more contributors able to do the type the types of analysis like this. This was a one-off by uh, these two guys here. Uh, I don't think either of them have authored a further report for the signpost. So cool, this one went viral, but there's no very good way to replicate it without finding additional contributors that have that expertise, that skill set in a particular area that um, the regular people, non Wikipedia editors, or any of the other projects can connect to. Documentary movie. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to uh, uh, eventually, um, when the time is appropriate, when the resources, when the resources are there, uh, make a proper production to document this whole thing, uh, to do it as fairly and uh, openly and evenly as possible across, uh, fairly to fairly represent how it's affected the entire planet, which would be that's a large. Job. It's a big task to do, but it's the kind of thing that I think uh, the world kind of needs, uh, considering all the uphill communication that needs to happen in order for people to just have a basic understanding of Wikipedia. If you just tell them, oh, just go watch the movie, you'll get it. Uh, that achieves so much. Uh, people don't have to sit and read, you know, 10 pages about Wikipedia on the article about Wikipedia that's only going to hit a certain audience. But if you make a movie about it, it uh, anybody can get it. Oh, I would all be CC by SA, of course. Yeah, I mean, the, the ideally I'd want to release all the raw footage as well, so that if you don't like the cut that I make, then you could make whatever cut you want. But this is all just, these are ideas right now for the future. There's no exact plans for anything. But, but see, Victor, if, if you uh, like that idea. Tillman, do you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to uh, kind of reinforce two things that have already been said. One is the uh, trend to more multilingual content. I mean, especially in the book, of course. So since last, since a year or two, we have been had we have had the technical infrastructure on Meta, and it's still improving. But and but I think that's a, a trend that's going to continue. And other, the other thing is perhaps more internal, but. Um, we have this problem that the communication inside the movement is quite affected and there's, there's a technical potential for um, if be periods, um, following much more uh, news, much more across wikis. And I think that will also help the outside communications because um, um, to get things into the press, right, um, we quite uh, rely on local people, on uh, chapters or other anonymous volunteer wikimedians who know how to pitch things in their countries to their media and um, we have the ComCom list which hasn't been talked about yet. So the communications committee of uh, people who are involved in media work across the movement, I think we have like 150, 150 subscribers to the internal mailing list now. They sometimes use it to, uh, to spread uh, news that's going to be translated or pitched to local media. But I also think it will help a lot if you have, um, if Flow or Echo, among <coughs> new people I might have been to the other talks today, um, where they can, for example, subscribe to the blog on your own wiki or uh, things like that. Yeah, so translations and kind of more um, uh, cross wiki or cross movement communications with all kinds of external things. Thank you. Um, so I, I would, in a, as a general trend, I'd like to see us do a lot more publishing and in more languages on the Wikimedia blog and within the social media channels. But I do have a fantasy of, um, of having a, like a volunteer editorial board or something like that where people, so right now when the drafts go up on Meta, it's usually me or Tillman or someone else who, who takes a pass and doesn't edit. And sometimes it's, it's great. I mean, we tell some folks, we say, please do it in your, your language and just give us a Google Translate if that's the if that's all you can can do, or if you can't find someone to translate to English, and we'll just wrap it together and, and make it into uh, less machine-like English. Um, so I'd, I'd love to see, 
some, is some capacity for that. And, and we'll, we're going to be redesigning the, the pages on Meta where, uh, where we're, we have the blog drafts and trying to make it more obvious for people. We're also, uh, and I'm happy to say that the feature is going to be here soon for the blog. So this is, uh, you saw the old blog, which is, uh, I think you remember the old blog. Let, let me just throw it back. So this is the old blog. Uh, this is the new blog, and it's not. Uh, it's still on a, still on the uh, um, you know, a, a third-party contractor is developing it for us. But essentially, we're taking out foundation, as you can see. Uh, we would, we're moving the blog. Uh, sort of the, the architecture and structure behind it is going to be um, around categories and not around departments. On the old blog, you can see we have tech blog, global blog, fa uh, fundraising, and wiki women are the, the few categories that we have. And, and the, it really, the tech blog is kind of about the engineering department at the Wikimedia Foundation. So when we have something like this, OTRS system, you know, that's not really run by the, the technology department. For some reason, we are not seeing the left part. Oh. I don't know why that is. I don't know either. Um, oh, can you turn? Can you maybe hear in if it? No, no, it's, it's, it's something in the it's something in the display. Sorry. Uh, anyway, the there is a there's a very Wikipedia like looking. Um, oh, I guess I could just can I pull this over? No. No, 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 Okay, I'm not going to worry about it right now. But anyway, so the the goal is less about the the departments in the foundation because that's kind of that doesn't make as much sense anymore because we have so much content that is based around categories. So the, the, new, the new blog is going to be designed around categories. We want to showcase images much more so you can see um, we have uh, a, a much easier way to showcase the quality images. Um, you, can, we, you can pop up the window. What was the recommendation? So full, set up full, of the full window, just pop up the window. I don't really know what you do. Yeah, that's it. Drag it. Yeah. Drag it with you. Yeah, but more to the right. More to the right. No, you need to drag it down. You have to look at the big screen. Yeah, man, turn around. I, I, I get it. I'm just not able to get it. Is that? There we go. Yeah. Right. So it's right. OK. So yeah. Oh, you see that now? All right. So the idea is to, is, is to do it around categories so that we can uh, if a post is about technology, it doesn't matter if it's from the foundation or if it's from the community. It's it's technology, grants, community, etc. So the the idea is, and this is still rough. There's a lot that that needs to be uh, worked out. We're probably about a month away from from going live with this. But essentially, we we change the change it more to a, a kind of a news format. Uh, I know it looks a little bit less like Wikipedia, and there there was some internal debate about that. Uh, but we we. One of the big things was taking foundation out of the name of it, and we're actually we're going to open it up. I don't know if people are going to want to change the name entirely, but we're we're completely open to doing an RFC around a, a name change so that it could potentially better uh, represent if if there's a better name out there, if it could better represent it. So. Wikimedia. No, well, this is where the RFC should happen because <laughs> I think there'll be a big discussion about that. Yeah. Yeah. More people definitely know Wikipedia. That's the big brand. Um, but that's kind of it. Kind of goes to the point of what we're we're trying to do is to let more people know about Wikimedia and and showcase the the many different projects, the people behind those projects. Um, so it, it is a challenge, but. I, I think, yeah, we can discuss that when the RFC comes up. But let's open it up. I'd love to hear questions or comments from you all. Okay. Um, I, I basically have two questions. What exactly is your intended audience combined with how much are you bought into these categories that you are showing? The categories are completely flexible. The, those, these are just a placeholder right now. Um, and the, the, the intended audience is basically probably not too different than what we currently have, which is about a 60-40 split, 60% editors, 40% general public. I think we'd like more general public. I think we'd like it to 
to basically appeal to people who don't already have a vested interest in um, in the Wikimedia movement? Because right now it sounds very organizational to me to split up between the categories and not mm -hmm. really topical. Yeah. I well, this is this is totally fungible. We can we can make it kind of anything that that makes sense. Um, again, this is a, a working version. One thing I forgot to show you, and which I should have, is this is fully responsive, so it works on any size screen, which I love. Um, yeah, so it's 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 uh, the it's just part of the um, it's part of WordPress 2012. Um, is you can have fully responsive, and you can see how it. We got another question over here. Uh, maybe you already answered, but I need to repeat it. Uh, actually, I would like to get involved with a more translating maybe the blog and uh, write original content. I don't really know how you guys manage uh, the, the schedule. Do I do that myself? If I'm writing original content, for instance, are you? Uh, am I the one who's going to schedule it or get them? It's a, it's a dance, it's a waltz, we figure it out. It, it, mostly what happens right now is people, when they send when they send original content to us, they usually just start a draft. Maybe, they, maybe they'll notify us ahead of time, the, the us meaning some of the people who work on the communications team within the foundation, um, or they just calendar it. Usually, it's, it's great if you'd like to, please do reach out to us. In the guidelines, you can see sort of how, uh, how we recommend uh, some some rules of thumb for it, but no, it's just it's just by it's by reaching out to any of us. It's by search for blog on MetaWiki, and you'll find this um, this interface. And we're going to make the interface better designed as well after the blog is redesigned is out. Um, but but yeah, I, we've had we've had some folks who I mean, and Justin, I don't know how you decided that you were going to start translating for the blog. Was it? Uh, thank you, Aya. One day I talked to Matt in Chile in Liberacom, and I really worry about to uh, get information from other people. Like we are doing right now in Lithuania, we can talk with other people, we can uh, exchange and share experience. And there is no many information about the community, about the other chapters in Spanish. Uh, and I decide to uh, start to translate the information to the Spanish because nobody else was care about about it. Uh, so I write, write send an email to, to Matt, and I just uh, start working. And I think it's a powerful tool because we can share our knowledge, our different projects are in the blog. You cannot information about different projects of different chapters in other in other place. So mailing lists and sometimes it's very complicated. But in the blog you have so many incredible experience that you don't find in a lot of things. And um, we've been recently the uh, Wikimedia Russia chapter contacted us and said can you uh, I know that Victor's done a lot of interviews in Russia when he traveled there, and they, they knew that he had done some for the uh, fundraiser. Can you profile more Russians on the blog, and, and we'll we'll translate them. So that's we've been doing a lot of that. We've been putting the drafts here, and then they'll they'll come in and do a Russian translation uh, of the of the draft that we'll we'll do based on the interview. Um, so it's it's something we we. Um, if you're interested in doing translation work, you should also consider um, signing up as a translator on Meta. So since last year, the, we have the certification system. If there's a new translatable page, um, not only blog posts, but also policy pages on Meta or other things. Um, once they become available, you get a notification, and then you can come in and translate if you have time. And there's also the uh, translator translators L mailing list. I also see some translation pads, so if you are well, I would like to get involved. Is that two points where you can subscribe? The um, so we also the I think it would be different for different chapters or different groups. Like you know, Wikimedia Deutschland has a very active publishing schedule, and and so they're it, 
compared to some of the other blogs, they they will have a different interest in it. But we would we would really like to invite, and I think part of the redesign of the blog was was a consideration. Maybe this can be blog zero, where if there's something that's really important across the movement that you want to communicate and and get it through the various social media channels, think of it as this. And that's why we kind of have a you know, we would have a foundation category within this as. So our, our contributions would still come to the blog, but it would not be a, a central thing. So say there's an interesting report from uh, you know, Sweden that they want to have uh, a wider audience for than they've been, I think that's the thinking that, that the Swedish chapter's been doing, is let's put it on meta and send a quick note to Matthew or someone else and, and we'll get uh, some review of the English translation and then it goes up. Um, and so the Benoit, to your point, the um, it's just a, if you just want to send us a note, we can do that. I mean, what I would like to, ideally I'd love to have a volunteer editorial board of people who, you know, that, that so I'm not the one that's the, the bottleneck for more posts. So that's, that's something we could definitely do more of, is have, have people who want to participate in it and, and really expand it. I think that we still need to, you know, there, there will be, someone who's paid to do this like me should probably still continue to, to keep momentum going, but I would much prefer expanding it and, and broadening it. So, Adam? Um, this, this looks cool, but something I'm noticing is that it seems like, uh, given the, the sort of blue and square design and everything, maybe it's appealing to the same people that write the encyclopedia, and you might want it to appeal to a different crowd or something, who don't already have, you know, those people in the encyclopedia. You know, there don't be any population you can tap into with more energy. Or I don't know, what the yeah. colors. Based on the uh, based on the new design. Yeah. Yeah, we can. I mean, no, this isn't set in stone yet, but One the blue. Or yeah. The, well, the, so the slider. Uh, the idea is that that we'll also have. You know, we'll you'll have a featured image with each thing. So whatever the image is in the post will be here. So this is still kind of a rough, roughed out uh, work in progress. Uh, but I did want to show some folks. Anyone else? As uh, someone who uh, gives lectures at least uh, twice a month, I'm always looking for new tools. And one of the tools I found very interesting was, but I was asked to, to give a lecture on the way uh, editors in the media communicate. It was uh, a big conference. So I used uh, two short movies we put on, a, on YouTube that it's very difficult. Probably not you, but somewhere else. Okay, so I'm looking for like short movies, about uh, like two minutes long, uh, that we can use in order to show like this is very easy to edit. This is what people say about it. So the the, the two I used were like people telling uh, how like one of them is called Nice People Wikipedia something like that, and it was very helpful because you know it showed all all sorts of people and. And, and this way, I showed my audience. It's not only like, uh, um, not only, not only uh, uh, nerve, uh, nerve, and not only like male. There were female there. There were like all, all sorts of uh, people uh, combined in one, in one mm -hmm. short story. So I may find it very helpful if you can produce some small of these codes. Sure. Uh, well. First off, I'd say uh, anytime we invest any resources to making a video, because video production is expensive, we try to make it as uh, multi-use as possible. So, uh, for example, the, the uh, video that we produced last year was four minutes long, and it did about three or four different things. It showed how uh, wide-ranging okay, so the international about was. I'm sorry? I, I, I'm asking about videos for, about focusing on one topic. Not not like four minutes about several issues. Uh, like uh, so you're you're thinking like a tutorial, like tutorials. Not only. I mean, the one about uh, nice people wasn't a tutorial. It was just showing you the faces of editors. Who who are they? And it like and it gives you an ability to, to show others. Look, they you may be one of them. I, I mean, this is one example. I I had another one. I forgot what was it, but but. Uh, but uh, this is short this stories may may help us. Right, uh, it's 
Uh, sure, there, there are all different kinds of topics uh, to cover, uh, and I'm just one guy. I have a very limited budget to work with. Uh, there's an interesting, uh, so Andrew Lee, who's in the back of the audience here, he had a lecture at the foundation uh, about uh, making video and what it would take to make video, and there's a huge, huge lack of video on Wikipedia right now. This is the kind of thing also that uh, I think Andrew and I would both agree that we would encourage the community to do themselves uh, when there are uh, uh, things that, uh, in ways that I can help with that, that we can help with that, I'd like to. Uh, Hi, I'm Trevor. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, but there, there are all kinds of other things. Uh, uh, you know, we'd like to get the community involved to make things as they need it, but we realize that video production is, especially high quality video production, is expensive, time consuming, requires a lot of different skills, etc. Uh, okay, so something else, can you put like a link in order to download it? You, you put it on YouTube? And then I have to use some third party tool. Oh, in order anything, to... anything that we publish on YouTube that the WMF, uh, anything we publish is on YouTube is comments? also going to be on Commons as well. Uh, yes, but in the Commons it's, it's in OGG format, and I would like to have it in a uh, move or uh, there's, there's, a like little bit, there's a little bit of an issue for that because any of those proprietary licenses are okay. exactly that. They're proprietary. We don't have a license to distribute uh, MP4s, H.264, uh, any of these common codecs. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's where video uh, is really a difficult issue uh, in a lot of ways. That fortunately, we have this new video player uh, that works beautifully, but it doesn't work on all devices. Uh, exactly. When, when I go somewhere to lecture, I mean, I don't know what, what, what will they have in their own computer. So if I put it in PowerPoint, I have to make sure that, uh, that the local uh, computer the ability to show yeah, yeah, this is a litigious, this is a, uh, an issue of law that we don't have a license to distribute MP4s. Should we have a license to distribute MP4s? That's a, a, a sort of spiritual question for us as an organization. Do we want to buy something that's proprietary in order to be able to do that? Okay. I just want to click on this. Um, it has become a lot easier to copy videos from YouTube to Commons since Google has a supporting web app. It's in the free form, which is allowable on Commons too. So earlier you needed to uh, convert this. Which to your process. And so we do it in this more, more frequently now that we publish something like this videos on, on YouTube and upload in comments itself. And if you end up few, I know some chapters are doing this publishing videos and comments, it's become really easy now to use the right tool to download them and make it to comments. And then we can also use them on the blog, for example, because we don't use uh, YouTube videos there. We have one right in the back here. Yeah, just curious, is this going to be optimized for mobile? For example, if I'm on the Wikipedia on my phone and I click the blog link. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh it's uh, responsive. So when you're, this is just, I'm just demonstrating, but if you go, you can go to wikimedia.wpengine.com right now on your phone and actually let us know uh, how it looks. But, but the new one. We'll that's, that's what I mean, this is the new one. And if I can get this arrow to work, I can show you. So it, it automatically, Changes um, as part of the responsive design, so you should you should see something roughly like that. If you're on a 640 pixel width, if you're on a tablet, it should be something like that, and then regular desktop. Very neat, by the way. So I think that this is the first time that you showed the new video to an audience, right? To any kind of a large public audience, yes. Okay, so I would love to hear like. Um, feedback or reactions about it. I don't know if you have time to hear or if after anybody wants to hear uh, or talk about it. Or like to Fantastic, but why emphasize it? That's a very good question. Uh, so the students themselves, this uh, part of what the foundation exists is to support the editors of Wikipedia. Period. I, you know, that's it. Uh, and these people, these students wrote this letter and posted it on Facebook. This is where their campaign lives. They started this. This is for them. This is not, we did not start this. That's why it's there. That's it. So, uh, so a campaign that aims to have a huge reach, uh, and you want to send all the people directly to the page. 
Yes, and I want them to, to control that. They deserve to control it. They started it. They want to do it. That's the idea. So we but thought that. That's not the impression you are giving, though. The impression you are giving is that you're doing like Whole Foods or any others that they show like they should take. I'm sorry, I don't. I didn't the impression it gives it's not that you're pointing to the page that the students created. The impression you give is like just any other commercial brands, they show their Facebook page. Uh, there is no. Uh, well, uh, it's blur, it does, it does blur a line. It does blur a little bit of a line. Uh, this is not direct communication. My role is slightly more on the advertising side of things. Uh, I am not uh, trying to say that Wikimedia uh, was created this campaign, but I'm, we're certainly trying to amplify it. Uh, and that's, I think, I don't think there's really a problem. I don't personally have a problem with that. My feeling in uh, going there to, to document them and linking to Facebook was uh, I wanted to amplify their campaign. I felt that they deserved it. Uh, and for many, many, many people in the world, unfortunately, Facebook is the internet. It's a, it's a real tragedy, I feel. But uh, that's the facts. Uh, and if that's what it takes to get the message out there, to put a URL in there, uh, I think that's OK. Um, the, the Twitter, there's a Twitter ta hashtag on there as well, and uh, someone else advised me to put that there as well, so that it was in further social media. And this new blog, do you use uh, WordPress? Yeah, we're not, we don't actually know for sure yet, so we're in negotiations of where it's going to be hosted. It's, it's, uh, the, We'd like to have some redundancy uh, in case our cluster goes down, which is pretty unlikely. But right now, if that did happen, the only way to tell the world would be on Twitter or uh, Facebook or some other other outlet that, that's not ours. So that one piece of it is, is the redundancy. We, we've been talking with uh, Automatic, but, which is behind WordPress. And um, I don't know if I, if I can say it publicly, but they, they've been very flexible. Yeah, the, they've been, we're likely going to be on WordPress. Dot com, like actual WordPress.com, um, potentially on this WP Engine one, but that's. And you like the new version of WordPress? So I guess about the hosting, right? I mean, the we host. have always been using WordPress as the software. Yeah, we, we currently use ourselves. WordPress. And that's going to remain the same, so yeah. But the hosting, yeah, the hosting is going to be third party, most likely. It, it, the WordPress is working with us to um, to reform their privacy policy to, to be better for Creative Commons licenses. So <laughs> that's. that's we're pretty excited, actually, that they're willing to do that. They, they, I, get, I don't know if maybe they just hadn't even thought about it before, but so that's it. That's in negotiations. That's one of the pieces that that will will determine whether we go to them or not. Yeah, the the we'll publish the code for this. Uh, on no, no, no. Sorry, S what was the question? Block, exactly this block, not. Uh, the index chapter uses the exact uh, the first theme that uh, the current blog. Yeah. Has. So this is much cooler. So yeah, absolutely. Once this is rolled out, can be used. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the goal, I, I, potentially, if if, you, if people wanted it, I mean, Terry Che and in the foundation has uh, he used to work for Automatic for WordPress, and um, he was saying that with the new theme, it, it would it, potentially we could you could have like block zero, block one, block two, block three, block four, they'd all be hosted the same thing. They would be different. You'd see block zero would be uh, this, you know, say this one, block one would be India, block two would be wherever, you know, Brazil or whoever wanted it and it would, could all be hosted in the same what I'm thing. Saying, we we host our blocks on our on our, our servers that can be use of theme. Yeah, yeah, the theme, that was part of the rules with the, the third party contractors. It had to be open source and we had to be able to publish the theme on Garrett. Or did. Do you want to get to this choice Terry or Terry? Terry Che. Uh, but you can talk to me too. Um, anyone else would like? Um, I was wondering, um, because if you're getting more and more content, uh, will you have some kind of personalization on the experience? at some point, uh, for example, at least geographically, that you get a little bit more of content from your own region uh, on t as, as like the, the, the top story. Well, that, so that, yes, I, I think that'd be great. The, the, one of the things the Brazilian uh, 
the group that is in Brazil that is trying to form a chapter, they've been talking about that. It's like we want to just have an iteration that is all in Portuguese and you know, where it makes sense to have some English, they would do that, but they, it would be you know, completely under their editorial control. And, and so we don't, I mean, that, it's kind of wide open at this point. Um, it would be, I think it would be really interesting to, to experiment with how that, how that would work. I don't know if that answers your question. I actually meant on this specific blog, so on the Wikimedia blog, uh -huh. that you have uh, some kind of a section which always refers to a blog post about your own region. Oh yeah, you know we—that's a—that's a really good idea. We—it's very widgetized, it's very uh, modular, so we can kind of we can change a lot of things. Right now, this is just sort of a, an ad for the Wikimedia Foundation, but this we can put this on a slider as well. Uh, we can switch, we can replicate 20 of those down the side if we wanted to. Um, so yeah, so the, it, it's it's very flexible. The goal is to, to be more flexible. And, and again, first iteration, we would love feedback, um, suggestions, ways to improve it. Uh, the idea was also to open more a lot of a lot of times traffic to the blog comes from referrals from Facebook and uh, Twitter and Google Plus. But it also works the other way around. If it is personalized, then mm. it will get more traffic because people want to go there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can subscribe to the chat blog. Yeah. One of the things that I didn't uh, show was we're, we're trying to showcase uh, comments much more. Um, and in the old blog, there's no way to see a, a post if it's fallen off the front page. If you don't search it, you, you have no idea that there's a there's a conversation happening. Um, so, so this is one of the features. We, it's right. <laughs> ignore this. This is the SOPA one. It has 13,000 some odd comments. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna set a, a we're gonna set it so it only shows the last 30 days. Um, so that it's more recent, but we, we wanted to, to uh, get more people discussing the topics here on the on the blog because um, a lot of it will happen. It'll be like a blog post, and then say everyone takes it to Wikimedia L, and it happens on this list. And, and if you don't know about Wikimedia L, and you don't you won't know that the, there's discussion happening there. So hypothetically, I mean, in my pie in the sky dreams, I I would love this to become one of the the main discussion spaces for important topics across the whole movement. So I don't know if that if people are going to want it to be that, but we'll see. So what about all the chapters and everybody just using this and that's it? Yeah, I mean, if they want, they, that's I know I was going to talk with Michael John from Deutschland uh, about for the collaboration. I mean, I think it would be different for for different um, different size chapters or different needs. Um, but I, I would I would want us to be totally flexible to that. Like I because they're they publish so much already, it probably doesn't make sense. I don't know what your your feelings are, Michael. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, right last year we published like um, three hundred plus um, blog entries, um, and only a small fraction of that um, would be I think suitable for this for the great idea of uh, sharing it on uh, the international blog. Um, and I think in the future uh, that might be really great to. Um, <coughs> I think you said uh, we should consider it as a tool, as a tool for um, international news, and I think it works, but um, not for everything. I don't check, but it is. Yeah, it's cool. about I mean, it's uh, under free license on the blog post. We have been uh, we sharing some, uh, I think, one from England, Germany as well. And uh, with me, a UK blog has um, copied some of our blogs on there, which is. And vice versa. But we'd love to. I'd love to do a lot more of that. I mean, and I think it's mostly just for kind of coordinating the editorial process, so getting communication going. Where, you know, if you if you have a blog post that you think is would make a great post for for the international media blog, then then we just make sure that we get it up there. Um, it's fairly trivial to to put the content on. Mako. Uh, just in the like sort of general feedback, I think it's awesome. I think it looks really cool. Uh, uh, I think that you're doing a lot of different things, and I would just be encouraged to get it out there and sort of do that interview. So I think that the ways in which you will use things like the comments and stuff is something which is going to evolve, and you know, like getting it out there and just quickly will allow the iteration of the design to be reactive. Awesome. Uh, we mentioned earlier the Wikimedia Research Newsletter. Uh, what is the 
maybe there is another way like, to make it more accessible. Because I think that in every language, there's like a page saying, these were the researcher, researchers made about Wikipedia, like the one you showed that between um, Wikipedia and the Titanic. So I, I heard for the first time about this newsletter, but if there's like a way to translate some of the some of the newsletter to other languages, we can put it like in this page or at least put a link not to the meta but to like something. something. Yeah, so first thing is, of course, it's a bit of a special audience. We try with this newsletter to um, make uh, research accessible for Wikipedians. But I mean, of course, it's still research minded Wikipedians. And the example of the blog post I was showing you <coughs> was actually an attempt to uh, explain something that we had already covered for this more specialized audience on the newsletter to so the blog post about the Republicans and Democrats we published on the eve of the presidential election. And that was kind of a different effort, right? And it just requires more uh, workload, right? I mean, this uh, Britannica result, the QI comparison you were mentioning, uh, would have needed like a few hours or an hour or so to make a several blog posts. And um, but you're right. I mean, this is a different level, which we haven't done in this case. But is it a problem that we can use while we work with all sorts of people from the academy? You know, we can show them. A relatively new thing, and uh, unlike the one you know, like for from four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't aware of this uh, newsletter, and no one in Israel, I mean, in our chapter, talked about it. So this is this, these are this is the kind of the kind of news we need in our day-to-day -day, uh, work with other entities. Right. Um, again, I mean, of course, you can say subscribe to it now and reuse it for your own. There's also on the French Wikipedia. There's the um, um, the name escapes me now, but um, there's a new research minor newsletter which actually reuses some of the of our newsletter, which is great, right? So they uh, translate some of them into French or enrich it a bit with their own commentary. And I think what we get more of that would be happening. We just don't have the capacity, right? I mean, like, to be honest, this is a side project of Daria and Mivi, and we have volunteer contributors, so we have a lot of unused opportunities actually there. Emily, last question maybe? Or... Go ahead. Uh, okay. uh, would you be able to put the content from um, the blog we have now? Yes. Yeah, so there's, there's, we did a, a database dump in a month ago. It's, it's taken a lot longer from the legal perspective than we anticipated because we, we have a more, much more restrictive privacy policy and we need to have that and we have for the, you know, the freely licensed uh, Content, etc. So, the, the, we'll do another database dump right before. You know, there'll be a, there'll be about actually about a week there where we'll run two simultaneous blogs and then switch. But happy to, to have more discussions. That we we kind of have hit really hit the end of the time. We we took up the extra thirty minutes. So thank you, everyone. Yeah, well, like, everyone's still uh, like, uh, 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 uh,